As promised, we are now going to create a new material for our floor, and this is going to be a much more detailed one because we're going to use textures as the inputs rather than just colours. We'll need to go into our hypershade then, if we're not already there. Make sure your workspace is clear. And we're going to start with a new Arnold AI standard surface. There we go. I'm going to call this M underscore floor 2. And before I bring my inputs in, what I want to do is to get a preset that's close because it will set up most of this to be near what I want it to be and then I can just make changes. So the preset I'm going to start with for this one is going to be just clay because that's going to be a fairly sort of matte, naturalistic looking material. So that gets us as far as that. Now what we're going to do is change some of these things. So we're going to be using textures. If you haven't done it already and you want to use my textures, then in the link below you'll find a link to it. Go into the source images folder of my project, get the textures and copy them into the source images folder of your project and you'll be good to go. And I'll show you again why you need to have them in your source images folder. So when I go to color, then this is what we'll change. Instead of changing the color here, we're going to go to this little button here, which I call the checker button. So we'll click that. This is going to create a render node and connect it to our shader. And the node we want is a file because that's what our texture is. So we'll click on file. In the property editor, it now gives us the properties for that file. And we just need to load it in first of all. So we'll click on the little folder here. And I'm using the floor textures. And I'm going to start with T underscore floor underscore D. The D denotes that it is a diffuse texture. And T means that it's a texture. And there we go, you can see it's a sort of sandstone-y kind of floor that I'm going for. So I'll open that, and you will then notice that the preview here changes. What I'm also going to do is just change the preview from shadable to sphere, because I think that makes it a little bit easier to see. Now what I want to do is just click over here on the main part of my material to get back to all the standard settings. And then what I want to do is change the roughness, which is under specular. I'll go to roughness and we're going to click on the checker button again, tell it that we would like to connect a file and then click on the folder. And then this time we're going to choose T underscore floor underscore R. The R means that it's roughness. So we'll give that a click. And you can see that's now made a change to the way that that looks. And we're going to load in one more texture, which is going to add the illusion of some depth to this material. So we'll click back on the main node. We're then going to just scroll down a little bit to geometry and expand that. And we're going to add a bump map. So we're going to click on the checker button next to that. Add a file. Now before we do that, we've got a few extra settings. We need to tell it what we want to use it as. And we need to choose tangent space normals. That's important for this step. And then you can see that our bump value here, this has got a connection made. And the connection is actually this file over here. So we'll click on that, and now we can load in our file. So let's click on the folder, T underscore floor underscore N. Normal maps are always kind of purply looking, so we'll click on open. And you can see that now brings in some really noticeable depth to it. There is, I have been reading, apparently a bug with Maya that sometimes your normal map in here won't update if you're using an Arnold material. If that's the case, just click on the pause up here and then click it again and that will make it refresh and that should update it. Okay then, that is the material made. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit in my preview here and I'm going to assign that to the floor. Now at this stage, you might see a problem because we are currently showing shaded view in Maya but we are, haven't yet turned on textured view. So as we're going through our buttons on the keyboard, We've seen number four, which is wireframe view. We've seen number five, which is shaded view. We now need to press number six, which is texture maps. And now you will see that texture come in on the floor. One thing to note is that we've only turned it on for this window here. If we minimize the hypershade and look in this window, it hasn't yet been turned on for this view as well. So I'm also gonna press six here. This now highlights a little problem with the texture in that the blocks, the slabs, are just too big. So what we're going to cover in the next step is using planar projection. We're going to start UV mapping. I'm going to do that to make these blocks a little bit smaller. So see you in the next step.
Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.